Our story began in 1874 when William Marion Fane and Carrie Birch Fane arrived at the Calvary Post in Camp Verde, Arizona. Now they had dreams of getting into the cattle business in the vast unfenced plains and high deserts of the Arizona Territory. This arrival came about because Marion was a 49er. He was looking for gold. Settling in Arizona came after Marion's second venture from west from Missouri, following the gold rush era, where he stopped to prospect the rich minerals in Nevada. There he met Carrie and soon married her, and the Fane story began. When they arrived in Arizona, they came in a covered wagon, pulled by two milk cows with a buffalo calf tied behind. The story is that they had exactly 50 cents cash in their pockets and their provisions were about used up. Marion was 40 and Carrie was 29. They had traveled with their two young children, George and John, and Carrie was pregnant with another child, William Jr., whose short life lasted only seven years. They eventually homesteaded in the Cornville area, just north of Stoneman Lake, on what they called the 16 Ranch. This was their only home where they raised their family and made a life for themselves until Marion Fane's death in 1912. Now backing up, through Marion and Carrie's life, they made a living by purchasing cattle with the money they made from cutting hay and tending to livestock for the Calvary, as well as a side business of selling milk and eggs in the community. In total, Marion and Carrie had nine children during their some 40 years of marriage. Four of them died at young ages. They had become leaders in the community life in and around the Stoneman Lake area. And in fact, even today, you can see several landmarks that bear the Fane name. After Marion's passing, Carrie eventually moved on to California, where she passed away in 1930. Now my great-grandfather, Granville Dan Fane, was born May 11th, 1879 in Cornville, Arizona, the sixth child of Marion and Carrie. Dan began his work as a cowboy at the ripe old age of five, when one day in the branding pen, his dad, Marion, shouted out at him, if you can catch that calf, you can have it. Well, young Dan, eager to have a calf with his brand, tried and tried, unsuccessfully though, to rope that calf. Finally, as the story goes, his pony ran over the calf and knocked it to the ground. Dan triumphantly claimed it for his own, and a cattleman was born. While a teenager, before the turn of the century, Dan worked with the famed Hash Knife Outfit, the Aztec Land and Cattle Company. There, he helped to organize the great roundups of the era, where cattle were rounded up from all over the region and gathered together. They were claimed by their respective outfits, and new calves received their brands. It was a true Wild West experience. This effort and Dan's skill as a cattleman earned him a great opportunity to be placed in charge of the 101 Ranch, which was owned by the Babbitt and Greening families. He ran that operation for about four years. He was still very young, but Dan decided it was time for him to start his own journey and build a life for himself and his family. Dan decided to buy a 160-acre farm at Camp Ferdy and graze cattle on his own land and also the open ranges of the U.S. forest allotments. Over the years, he expanded his holdings to include the H Triangle, the 111, the La Torriette Ranch, the Bloody Basin Range, the Hatchet Ranch, Big Bug Ranch, and eventually Ash Creek Ranch. A businessman had been born. 